Welcome back to my channel. Today's study notes is on chapter three and the topic is estates. And here are the objectives. Number one, what are the two types of estates? Number two, what are some of the determinations and conditions for a fee simple estate? Number three, what is a conventional life estate? And the differences between remainder interests and reversion interests. And number four, what are the types of leasehold estates? This should be fun, so let's get started. We hear the word estate a lot. What it means is ownership interest in real estate. And that includes both owning and leasing the property. But it does not include the interest in an easement or a lien like a mortgage or property taxes. So it's really quite basic. An estate really is the rights to a property within the title. There are two major types of estates, a freehold or a non-freehold. And a freehold is pretty simple to understand. What it means is a perpetuity. And oppositely, a non-freehold is a temporary. For example, a lease on rentals would be a non-freehold. Now, within the broad category of freehold estates, there are a few subcategories. The most common one is a fee simple estate. All freehold estates are assumed to be fee simple, unless some type of legal documentation like a deed or will specifies otherwise. A fee simple is inheritable. It is to the maximum that someone can hold. It is transferable at the will of the owner. And once again, the interest in ownership is forever. And then under fee simple, there are two types. Number one, it is absolute, which means that there are no conditions of holding it back. The owner is free to use it however he or she wants. The second type is qualified or determinable. And that means it comes with certain conditions or qualifications. And these qualifications apply to the automatic reversion of the title. The reversion will set the ownership of the estate back to the grantor or the grantor's heirs upon a specified event. If for some reason the fee simple estate is now terminated, all sales, encumbrances, and leases that were placed on the estate that qualified it to become a fee simple estate is now invalid. So poof, it's gone. The qualified fee estate has a few other names, including conditional fee, defeasible fee, and fee simple defeasible estate. Wow, that was a mouthful. The second type of freehold estate is a life estate and that is a non-inheritable estate. Now to make an estate a life estate, you have to put it in either a deed or a will. And in turn, the ownership is measured by the lifespan of a particular person. In this case, it's very important to put specific writing in either the deed or the will in order to convey what will happen to the life estate upon its termination. There are two ways to terminate. Number one is a reversion. In this case, the title reverts back to the grantor or the grantor's heir. The second one is called a remainder interest. Sometimes it's called an estate in remainder. What that means is that when the life estate terminates, the title will pass to a third party or the remainder man. And the person is usually specified by the grantor. The second major category of estates is a non-freehold. It's also called a less than freehold, leasehold, or chateau real. Again, mouthful. This type of estate is for a period of time and it is usually specified by a lease. The players in this are the lessor or the person renting out the property and then the lessee or tenant who is renting the property. Of course, each party has a different interest in the estate. The lessor has a reversionary interest and the tenant has a leasehold interest. There are four types of leasehold estates. Estate for years, periodic estate, tenancy at will, and estate as sufferance. And here are the explanations of all of them. An estate for years is just a lease. It's very simple. It specifies just the duration of tenancy. The periodic estate is kind of like the first one, except that it automatically renews itself on the last day of the term, unless specified for complete termination. An estate at will is when someone enters a lease and there is no end date. Of course, under the condition that both parties are okay with it. And an estate as sufferance is a situation that no one wants. Basically, what it means is that the tenant is using the property without the owner's consent. For example, if someone doesn't pay the rent. The very last part of today's chapter is a concept called the sale leaseback. It's a financial term and it's able to convert a freehold estate to a non-freehold. For example, the owner of a real estate can sell the real estate to someone, but then also lease it back from the new owner. 
In some situations, this is actually very ideal because if the seller needs cash, for example, he or she has a new job and needs to move very soon, and perhaps they need a down payment for a new house. They can now have cash on hand from the sale, but they're still able to have a place to live. And by the way, this is the only way to convert a freehold to a non-freehold. And with that, we are at the end of today's chapter. Let's do a quick review. Estate is ownership interest in real property. The two major categories of estates are freehold and non-freehold. Freehold estate is perpetual, which means it's forever. It's broken down into fee simple and life, with fee simple being the default unless specified otherwise. Fee simple is inheritable. You can use it and will it however you want. Life is a non-inheritable and it is measured by the lifespan of a particular person. A life estate can either revert to the grantor or the grantor's heirs upon its termination, of course, or it is specified to be passed down to a remainder man. Within non-freehold estate, there are four categories. Number one, estate for years, which means it's a lease with a specified amount of time. Number two, the periodic estate, which means it renews on the last day of the term unless it's terminated by someone. Number three, an estate at will, which means the tenancy will go on forever unless one of the parties dissolves that tenancy. And number four, an estate at sufferance, which means you're really in trouble. And basically that means that the tenancy is really not at the owner's consent. And lastly, if you want to convert a freehold to a non-freehold estate, you have to use a financial agreement called sale leaseback. Basically, you can sell your house for cash, so you can use it for whatever you want and you can lease the property back from the new owner. And that's it for today. The next video will be on chapter four and the topic will be about tenancies. See you next time. Mm -hmm.